Hi everyone, James here from F9 Audio and the Freemasons and today I'm incredibly proud to present to you the F9 Toolkit for Ableton. This toolkit injects a 5 gigabyte sound library of multi-sampled instruments, sound menus and effects into Ableton and it will work with Live 9, Live 10, Standard or Suite editions. Now before we go any further, I just want to show you the power. Bearing in mind everything we're going to show you today is MIDI driven. There isn't a single loop inside this library. So this is how we can get Ableton to sound using the toolkit without a single third party plugin. <laughs> Or like this. And thanks to its multi-sample collection of real instruments, we can also get it to sound like this. And because of its unique collection of highly melodic instruments as well as darker elements, we can go from this. To this. To this. And to this. But I think what I'm most proud of in this release is that we've managed to cover modern styles, classic styles, but always with contemporary sonics. And we got some great surprises along the way as we can take this toolkit from this. To this. And once again, just to be clear, this is all coming from MIDI and instruments. There isn't a single loop involved. So let's start diving straight into some of these sounds. And this entire video is going to be covering the drums. The reason being is there are so many of them. There are over 1700 drum sounds in this release and they're all organized by sound type in racks of sound type. So we're going to start with the kicks, obviously. Um, and we're just going to come over to the browser here. You can see we've got 808 kicks, club kicks, EDM kicks, kick explosions, machine kicks. Anytime that you see machine with a sound type, this means that the, uh, the rack is going to be containing sounds that come from classic drum machines. All, the, all of our favorites. Stadium kicks, tight kicks, urban kicks by and urban kicks. One thing that we feel sets this release apart and we're really proud of is the preview system. Every time you can see these individual racks, above them will be a preview folder. Twirl that folder open and inside are some clips that you can play back by either clicking here at the bottom, click to preview. Or you can use the right arrow on your keyboard to preview. All of the preview clips are specific to the instrument, so if we select one of the electric pianos, we'll get this. And don't forget, all of these clips are provided to you guys completely royalty free, so feel free to drag them into your own arrangements if you like them. Okay, back to these drums. So these are a quick example of the kick menus. We've got a great selection of club kicks. You'll find these have real weight and power. We have EDM kicks. 
kick explosions, which are kick drums being fired into cavernous reverbs, perfect for breakdowns. Machine kicks, kick drums sourced from classic and everybody's favorite drum machines. Now you're here, these are not the raw sounds. There are so many copies of the raw sounds out there on the internet, this is not what we wanted to do with this release. We wanted to give you production ready sounds. So they've been compressed, they've been carefully EQ'd, and where appropriate, they've got ambience already applied to them. The stadium kicks are generally live sourced with some electronic layers in there as well, but with great natural ambience. A to eight kicks, as you heard before, a whole selection. and a really well-heeled collection of urban kicks. So a huge amount of choice, even just on the kicks. But let's start to hear some of this in context. And I've put some of these drum menus into one of the startup pages that comes with the deluxe edition. This is the house startup page. Let's listen to some of these menus. Now, I've put a tempo change in this production to show you one thing. As we are just triggering instruments with MIDI here, you get no glitching when you have tempo changes, and these sounds will work at every single tempo. So you are not restricted in the same way that you are with loop packs. Now, before we actually look at the rack macros, let's have a quick look at the claps. And I've twirled down the, uh, the clap racks preview system so we can check from here. These are some of the finger clicks. Hybrid claps. Now these claps have a degree of pre-shifted information in front of them, so you get this kind of build up into it. As I'm sure you can hear, those hybrid claps are made up of many different sonic layers. But with the pre-shifted information, you're going to have to drag them back from the actual beat slightly um, in your MIDI arrangement. So we do have cut versions of these, they're called hybrid claps short, and they're without the pre-shifted information. After many years of working in soul funk and disco, we've managed to perfect the recording of live claps. Now, here's a great tip for you. If you ever get a box from Amazon, you open it up and it's got those massive kind of air bubbles inside it. I'm talking about the ones that are nearly a foot long. Then bursting those in a reverberant room and recording the results can get you brilliant sounding live claps if you stack a few of them up. Okay, machine claps now from everybody's favorite drum machines. And once again with these machine sounds, these are production ready, so they have been carefully processed and ambient supplied. But we do have shorter, tighter versions of the same sound set. And the last of the clap menus now is called Minimal Claps. As you can hear, these are multi-layered sounds and often even incorporate uh, elements of Foley or grunge. Now, whilst we're on this patch, let's take a look at the rack controls and the macros that we've added for these uh, actual patches. You'll see here we've got two sets here. Um, Ableton, as you know, only allows for eight macro per rack, and we wanted a little bit more control on these drums, so we've included a separate processing rack, this drum process too. But first of all, let's take a look at this set of macros, which are controlling parameters for the samplers driving these menus. We've got a pitch control. <laughs> 
you've got two octaves of pitch control there in either direction, and we really encourage you to explore the extremes of that, particularly pitching sounds like claps down. Next, we've got an overdrive function and standard low-pass filter controls. It's a little-known fact that there is FM synthesis in both of the Ableton samplers, and it works beautifully on drums. So look what happens when I turn this FM control up. Add that with some filter. And then change the modulating pitch, maybe. You can get some really interesting electronic overtones with that. Next up, we've got velocity sensitivity. So turn this up and the patch will become more sensitive to velocity. Turn it all the way down and it's at full whack all the time. And a volume control. Now this is useful because it's going to feed into some of the drum processing. And as we've got parallel racks in there, it's useful to be able to just control what's actually firing into the additional effects. OK, now onto the second processing rack. We've added a high pass filter a parallel reverb that allows us to add some nice ambience. Uh, we've got it quite short here, but you'll hear what happens as I turn it up. Now, really importantly, you'll notice there that the original sound does not disappear. That reverb is supplied in parallel. I think it's a great way of setting reverbs up in Ableton. Now, I've just changed patches here quickly and gone to the machine clap, so I can show you this byte circuit. This byte circuit is a mixture of parallel compression and equalizer that will add some compressed EQ effectively in parallel to the sounds. And you can control the frequency. So it really adds some nice front, uh, particularly to percussion sounds. And speaking of front on drums, this is exactly what the next two controls do, snap amount and snap time. So this will bring in a very carefully tuned parallel uh, compression circuit, and it's all to do with the attack portion of the compressor. So as I turn this up, it kind of accentuates the transients. Now, as opposed to it being EQ-based, like the uh, bike controls before it, this is purely time-based. So it's using the attack portion of a compressor, and we have control over it here. Now, this is not an extreme effect, but it is designed to do one thing, and that's to help you tailor the attack portions of your drums. This can be vital in getting them to cut through in a busy mix. So I really encourage you to explore the extremes of some of these controls and see what you can get up to. Now, like all of this inside of Ableton, there is nothing that we're hiding here. You can go in and dig into the racks and see all of the processing and learn from it and see how we're doing things. Click on the Mac button on any of the racks to see how we've set the macros up. Now, of course, an essential ingredient in any production is the snare, and we've got a whole host of snare menus for you now. Now, across all of these drum menus, there are at least two octaves of sound, so there's at least 24 sounds in each patch, but bearing in mind in quite a few of them, there's more. Let's start in alphabetical order. These are the 80s snares. got 808 snares. Now these are machine derived snares, but they're not just 808s, they're 808 style snares as well. We've got a great selection of hybrid snares. Now these are multi-layered sounds that contain elements from all sorts of places and often have got some really cleverly pitched uh, percussion elements. So it's kind of referencing a lot of the sounds that we're starting to hear in genres like future bass. A lot of those snare drums are really quite long, so we've also got a much tighter set of those. This is hybrid snares short. And now the machine snares. Now, I don't know a single producer that doesn't love snare drums from the old drum machines, uh, but we also spent a great deal of time on these, making sure that every single one will cut through on a modern production. Here's just a few of them. And now for probably the snare drum's most famous alternative articulation, the rim shot. Now obviously, traditionally, this is where you lay a drumstick across an actual snare drum and tap the rim. It was also one of the first alternative articulations put into original drum machines, including the analog, so you get these. 
on this particular patch, I really encourage you to come down here and play with the pitch. Look at what happens when you start to detune some of these sounds. Sampled rimshot sounds have a rich history of being detuned by producers that were using some of the early drum machines, particularly by one purple clad genius from Minneapolis. Okay, up next, a great big fat menu called Uber Snares. Now, as we said before, we've got a minimum of two octaves for each patch, and here we've got 24 snares, 24 of these uber snares mapped out across the keyboard. These are designed to be as huge as possible. They are multi-layered, they are heavily processed, but never over-processed. We've got some proprietary techniques that we use with limiters and uh, analog processes afterwards to gain the power of a limiter, but never uh, actually add that clipping distortion, which means they can't work together with other sounds. Now we've also got the Uber Snare Plosions, which is a patch that fires these snare drums carefully into some uh, cavernous reverb. Great for drum feels like this. They've got just the right hint of overdrive and distortion on them. And as with all of these racks, you can easily open stuff out and see exactly how we're doing all of the processing. Now, we are considering a little iPhone app for just these two patches that when you click on it, will actually show you how far away your Uber snare is from your breakdown. Rounding off the snare drum menus is this awesome collection of urban snares. Now, often snares like this can sound great by themselves, but don't work in track. So let me play you them back in context. This is the Regatron startup that comes with a deluxe edition with a selection of these snares over the top. If you're into your jack in house, give these snare drums a go on your actual offbeat hits. You'll be amazed at what you can get out of them. Okay, so moving on to the hi-hats now, and the 808 hi-hat must be one of the most used percussion sounds of all time. We've got 36 808 and 808 style hi-hats mapped out across the keyboard here, and particular attention has been paid to the top end EQ and also the transient information. They're carefully level matched, and with some clever programming, you can get some great results. So rather than me just hit a few through, I've set up a little example here, and we're going for the world record of the most complicated hi-hat programming in existence. So I'm sure you can hear that these really cut through no matter what's going on. Now, I'm sure your personal sample collection is not short of closed and open hi-hats, but what we've done with these menus is made sure that they're all carefully level matched. We've got two menus of closed hats and one full of open hats. We've also got a remix of that open hat patch that has a rough or kind of biting EQ that's particularly useful to bring out the offbeats in house. And rounding out the hi-hats, we've got a number of patches that are featuring recordings from real hi-hats that we've done very carefully here at F9. My absolute favourite are the 2002 vintage and 2002 phased patches. Now, these do not denote the year 2002. These are a particular type of brass that we find record perfectly. Here they are in action. Using delays and phase on hi-hats was a particular favourite of the late 70s and early 80s funk movements, and we've kind of replicated it nicely here. Great if you're making space disco. Moving on now to the percussion, and we've got two fantastic menus of analog percussion. Now, these are sourced from the studio's hardware synths and put through all sorts of effects and processes. <laughs> 
Uh, that's some of the sounds on menu one. This is some of the sounds on menu two. A great deal of variety there. And as I've said throughout this, every single one of these drum menus comes with at least 24 sounds. Okay, hand percussion. And again here, we've got two separate menus. Now we've tried to make these sounds once again as production ready as possible. So you've got little ambience tails on there, nice bit of compression, nice EQ and distortion. If you've ever struggled to actually record your own percussion, try a few tips like this. Take a lot of the top end off. If you can EQ into your sound card, do. And always apply a nice bit of ambience and quite a bit of distortion afterwards. You'll be amazed at um, how much these sounds actually need distortion to kind of bring them out. One of my favourite percussion patches in this pack is this contemporary collection of layered percussion. It can be great for picking out certain uh, actual cues within the rhythms, maybe snares going back into the downbeat, or for just supplying some interesting offbeats. Here's a perfect example using the stadium bass startup. Now this is one of those patches that I'd highly recommend that you record your parts with the quantize turned off and then go back in and carefully edit and see which ones need pushing back or moving forward or, or locking directly to the grid. Having slightly out of time elements like this hitting against your main drum sounds can really sound effective and surprisingly contemporary. Also in the percussion section, we have live bongo and live conga menus, as well as a collection of samples of percussion taken from the world's favourite drum machines. Uh, rather than me just play through, I thought we'd do a little demo like this. And once again, just so useful to have all of these laid out across the keyboard in menus, quick loading and ready to go. Just before we move on, I've got a couple of great effects driven patches. One is this selection of timbali hits that are heavily reverb, perfect for doing drum fills. And lastly, a selection of reverb drenched percussion hits that are perfect for adding just a little bit of color to particular parts of your drum track or bringing out some offbeats. Now this video is already starting to get epic, so before we go actually into the rest of it, I just want to show you this kit that we're really pleased with. This is the Uber Funk kit. Now this kit is nice and fat and it is an amalgamation of machine sources, electronic sources and real live recordings, but with a number of live recordings so we can put a degree of what's known as round robin in there. That means you don't get the machine gun effect when you actually uh, hit the drums. Each one is slightly different. Now within Ableton, I will admit you don't have true round robin in the sampling, but there is a trick that we can use to randomize the actual sample pool. Now that means even with quite static quantizing, we can get a degree of humanity into the actual parts. So now for the shaky stuff, and um, we've got quite a few menus here. We've recorded a lot of live percussion, but instead of just taking one or two hits from each, we've recorded a number, some strong, some hard, some a little bit softer, and laid them out across the keyboard. So that means for each actual shaker, you get a number of samples. And with some careful programming, and even with a few hits, just a few of the actual sounds firing, you can get some quite interesting percussion parts going.
Now we've also taken the same approach here with the tambourines. The white notes on a keyboard will trigger the softer hits of the tambourine. The black notes will trigger the accents. Now, the tambourines are notoriously difficult to record. They're incredibly bright, which means you stick them in front of a condenser microphone. They can sound dreadful. We've recorded all of these very carefully with BBC spec Coles 4038 microphones, and they sound brilliant inside a production. I've always loved the shakers from drum machines. There's something about their low bit quality that seems to make them fit just easier. And so many classic records have been driven by 16th or fairly fast shaker and tambourine parts. Now these are all set up here. We've also got some reverberated tambourines as menus. You'll hear some of them have got a degree of pre-shift on them uh, as the kind of tambourine rolls up to its main hit. So you may have to move some of these back, but they're incredibly powerful once you actually do. We've got also a number of tambourine and shaker rattles. Now let me just play you back all of those actually working against that drum beat from the Uber Funk kit we made earlier. So a great deal of flavour coming from the shaker and tambourine menus. And of course we've got toms included here as well. We've got three menus, analog toms, live toms and machine toms, and each menu has a selection of four sounds. So with the analog toms you've got everybody's favourites. Once again, perfectly produced so they fit straight into a production. You're not going to sit and struggle to get them to work. Live toms. Machine toms. Now, when we came to this section and we looked at all the drum machine toms and we then saw how everybody kind of loves to hear them in productions, we thought, let's just go completely over the top. So these are totally overblown deliberately. So now to round things off on the drums, we've got symbols and effects. We've got a menu of electronic symbols. If like me, you're a lover of low bit symbol samples, stay tuned from us in a couple of months. We've just found this incredible sampler that is four bit and variable rate. And we're gonna be using it during the creation of a series of 90s house packs. Um, and we're gonna take live recordings and shove it through it. The initial results are stunning. Moving on, we have live symbols. And now one of my favorite patches of the whole pack, we've got a selection of glitched tops. These can add some stunning top end detail. We've used them really carefully in the cinematic breaks demo and the cinematic breaks startup. And they will often work really well with one of the menu samples from the vinyl grunge patch. We've got a heavy menu of trailer slams. These are massed hits that have come from acoustic recordings, uh, Foley recordings, additional sound production, and some electronic elements that have then been very carefully squished together, a lot of distortion, some of them slightly time offset. They've got a great cluster feel to them. And finally, we've got a collection of more traditional effect sounds like these noise fallers. And a couple of risers that are easily controllable by the mod wheel.
So that concludes this first video showing you the content that's available inside the F9 toolkit for Ableton. Please don't forget to watch the other two videos. They will show you everything else. These are available either on the F9 product page or on our YouTube channel. We also have a YouTube playlist set up specifically for this release. We really hope you love this toolkit as much as we did creating it. And don't forget, if you ever make anything that you're really proud of, please let us know at info at f9-audio.com.